All right, so what we have here is a little uh, resistor network with a battery that's connected to it. Okay. The values of each of the resistors are given now that I put the last one in there. And what we're going to do is we are going to uh, calculate, first of all, what is the equivalent resistance of the resistor network. Once we've got that, we'll probably need that information to deal with part B, which is if a 9 volt battery, in other words, if that battery that's connected there is 9 volts, then uh, how much power will it end up supplying to the resistor network? And then think about another problem where if you took a different battery and you stuck it on there, and somehow you knew that the entire resistor network was dissipating 4 watts, then how much current would that imply the battery is supplying to the network? So we're going to answer these, these three questions. Where do you want to start? Okay, we'll start with A. I like that. We'll start with A. Let me actually start by doing this. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what a node is. Okay? A node, probably the easiest way to, to identify a node in a circuit is to look for places where you know several things are connected by nothing but wire nothing but a pure conductor okay all right so if we're looking for places where we're connected by nothing but wire we do is you know this is actually one of the ways i do it is i, oh, I pick up a highlighter and i say here's a place where we got nothing but wire that means that's a node okay let me take another color here say here I've got nothing but wire, right? So that's another node. Anywhere that I look in that node, we're going to have the same voltage because it's perfect. It's a perfect conductor. Okay. And I can do this at other places too. Okay. So I can say that's a node right there. You know, we can, we can kind of do this in multiple places. The thing that actually really matters here is for us to find the places where we have nodes where there can be a split in where the current goes. Okay, That very first one I identified up there with the yellow, a lot of times we won't even really spend a lot of time trying to identify that as a node because it's not super interesting. There's only one place the current can go. So really, even though it's a good idea, good idea to be able to identify any node, the ones that we really, really care about are the ones where the current can split and go multiple different directions. Current coming in can go more than one place. And so here's where you know I would actually say for this problem, the blue, the green, and the purple that I've highlighted right there, those are the ones where it's really kind of interesting. Okay. Now, if you can identify uh, maybe two different paths to get from one node to another, then those two paths are parallel. Okay. So if you actually you know, you're, let's say you're on the blue node up there and you want to get to the green node. What ways can you go? You can go down through the 9 ohm resistor or you can do what? You can go around through the 4, through the 5, and through the 6. Right? Those are the two ways if you're a little electron that wants to go from one of those nodes to another node, those are the two ways you can go. Okay. Now, how about if you're on the green node and you want to go to the purple node? You can either, you can go right through the 7 ohm resistor, or you can do what? You can go down through the 1, then through the 2, then through the 3. Okay. So, what that actually tells us here is that, uh, for instance, the 9 ohm resistor is in parallel with the combination of the 4, 5, and 6. Okay. And so this is a way that you can start visualizing a circuit. You can say, I, I know which ones are in parallel versus which ones are in series. We already sort of talked about the test for series. Series is basically, you know, is there just one path through multiple things? And if there's just one path through multiple things, then that means all those things are in series. So we would say like 4, 5, and 6 are in series. 1, 2, and 3, the 1 ohm, the 2 ohm, the 3 ohm resistor are in series. Okay, so if you go back and think about our steps that were uh, recommended uh, last time that we came together, um, what was one of the first steps? Ah, so I think what you're getting at is the, one of the first steps was find strings of them that are in series 
and then combine those together. Okay, so that's the first step I'm going to do here is do an intermediate drawing of this circuit where I take things that are in series, that are obviously in series, and I put them all into one resistor. Okay, so like what would that resistor look like if I was going to, you know, this is the 8 ohm, this is the 9 ohm. Now what would I put over for this resistor? 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 6 would be... 15. Okay, where else do I have a string of resistors? Okay, there's a 7 ohm. The other place I have a string of resistors is down this loop down here. And for there I have 1 plus 2 plus 3. So this would be what? 6 ohms. All right, now what? The next step that it recommended in that little step of or that list of procedures that you were given last time is find these groups of parallel resistors and then determine an equivalent resistance for those. Okay, so you know this was a battery. I'll label that again here. But then we'll take this and we will now resketch it one more time with what a battery, an eight ohm resistor, and now we're going to put in. I'll call this maybe REQ1, okay? And then I'll put down here REQ2. Because what I'm doing is I'm going to replace the 9 combined with the 15 for REQ1, and I'm going to replace the 6 combined with the 7 for REQ2, okay? This is a battery right here. All right, so REQ1 meaning equivalent resistance 1, how do I compute that? It'll be 1 over, what? 1 over 9 ohms plus 1 over 15 ohms. Okay, so 1 over 1 over 9 plus 1 over 15. All right, and that gives me 5.625. Let me show you something that's actually kind of cool here. Uh, there's, there is sometimes a, if you only have two resistors, there's a little trick you can do here. If it's only two, this ends up being the same as if you take a fraction where you take 9 times 15 and divide by 9 plus 15. All right, that only works if you only have two resistors. But when you have two, you can basically do the product of the two divided by the sum of the two, and that gives you the same result. We can prove that later, but I'll just give that to you for right now. Okay, so that is 5.625 ohms. All right, what about REQ2? Okay. We can do it our, our special, um, you know, slick way here. 7 ohms times 6 ohms divided by 7 ohms plus 6 ohms, okay? Note, there's no difference, right, that I could have done it the same way before as before, where I took the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals. I'm just showing you another way that we could do the same thing here. All right, so we give us uh, 7 times 6 over 7 plus 6. And that gives me 3 point, we'll say 3.231. Okay. So that's this right here, 3.231 ohms. So what's the next step? Okay. We're now to the point where we have two resistors that are in series again. Okay, and those two resistors can just add together. All right, so maybe I'll call that REQ3, but REQ3 
is just 5.625 ohms plus 3.231 ohms. <coughs> Ooh, thank you. Someone said, how about that 8-ohm resistor? I missed it, didn't I? This was also 8 ohms. I apologize. So what do we need to do? Okay. So I have to add on another 8 ohms. Keeping you guys on your toes. All right. So what do we do there? Plus 8. Okay. That gives me 16.856. ohms. Okay. And now what? Well, that actually answers part A, doesn't it? That is the answer to part A, 16.856 ohms. All right, what about part B? If the 9-volt battery is connected, how much power will it supply to the resistor network? So what we'll do is we'll go way down here and we'll say, what if this was 9 volts? Okay. And you might remember we had a couple of equations that we used for power, right? We, we looked at these last time. Okay. Here's what they were. We had P equals IV. P was also equal to I squared R, and P was also equal to V squared over R. What do you think might be most useful for us? Okay, yeah, V squared over R. So here, for our problem, P is going to be equal to 9 volts squared over 16.856 ohms. Okay, remember an, an ohm is what? An ohm is a volt per amp. Okay, so if we have volts squared over volts per amp, that ends up giving me volts times amps. And what are volts times amps? Okay, volts times amps are watts. Okay, we proved that also uh, uh, last time, I believe. So here we go, 9 squared divided by 16.856. Oops, need this in here. All right. And that gives me 4.805. Units? Watts. All right, so that's part B, 4.805 watts. All right, what was part C? If a different battery is connected and the resistor network then dissipates 4 watts, how much current is that new battery that you connected supplying? So now we're no longer with a 9 volt here. Now what? Okay. What do you think our, our best equation might be now? Yeah, so what we you kind of think of what do you know and what do you need, right? You actually know for this last part of the problem, you know power and you know resistance. Okay? And if you know power and resistance, then that allows you to find I. Okay? So what you do is you can, I mean, you can either do that formulaically and say I is going to be equal to the square root of uh, P over R. You can kind of do that first and then plug in the numbers. That's definitely a valid way to do it. And so this ends up giving you, okay, P there would be 4 watts that was given. And that was divided by R was 
0.856 okay ohms okay now let's think about those units just a little bit what is a watt okay so a watt is a volt times an amp okay so volts times an amp is what I have in the numerator inside the radical there and what's an ohm an ohm is a volt per amp okay so what happens in a you know in a setup like that is that the volts will cancel that's volts divided by volts but when we divide by something divided by amps that moves it back up into the numerator so this ends up giving us what amps squared okay which is good because that's inside of my radical and it gives me just amps all right so this is its confirmation to us that we probably aren't too far off with what we were thinking okay so now we pl plug this in and I ends up being the square root of uh, 4 over 16.856 okay so that means uh, it'll it needs 0.487 amps to dissipate that much power okay All right, any questions? Yes, sir. Okay, this was, I was showing you as I, I kind of showed you quickly, you know, that you could take a shortcut here and do the product of the two values divided by the sum of the two values if you just have two resistors in parallel. I'll show you here that I could just as easily have done this one over, one over seven ohms plus 1 over 6 ohms. This is what you were probably expecting to see. Is that true? Okay. Well, real quick, let's go ahead and see what that becomes. 1 over uh, 1 over 7 ohms plus 1 over 6 ohms. Okay. That gives us the same thing as what we got by taking the product over the sum. So it's just a shortcut. You can use it if you want. You don't have to use it. You don't even have to remember it. But if that's something that you find useful, there it is. Okay? Cool.